Hey everyone, and a happy Record Store Day to you! Yes, it is that time of year again, the time where we all overdraw in our bank accounts to pay for records that we could never afford in the first place. <laughs> so, as, uh, as you all know, uh, by now I hope, I am a, a huge lover and collector of vinyl records. I love both old and new. I love just about all types of music that go all around the board. I know I'm, I'm kind of flaring Judas Priest right now, but I really like all styles of music. Uh, Queen's my favorite band of all time, but I, you know, I'll be known to be blasting rap and hip hop and reggae and other things in my car too. I, I there's no stopping me. I'm, I'm just I'm nuts. <laughs> so. Uh, first off, before I show off everything I, I got today, um, I, I did want to give a shout out to um, uh, my uh, what I'll call my new local store, um, Spin Me Round Records. Normally I would go to Princeton Record Exchange every year, but I no longer live near there, so that would have been over an hour and 15 drive, which I know isn't even that much for some people, but when I've got a store that's you know less than 15, 20 minutes away, it's kind of a no-brainer to, to head out that way, so that's, that's what I did. Um, store is excellent. You, everyone who runs it, you all do a great job, and thank you so much for hosting everything. Um, so to start off, I'll, I'll showcase the, the little goodies that, uh, that I got this year. For starters, they gave us the official bag and poster. Here's the bag for everyone who's not seen it yet. Very nice, very simplistic, but very, very nice look. The bag also came with a sampler CD, as every record store day does, and I can't wait to listen to it because I love discovering new artists, and I have not heard of, uh, I don't know if I've heard of any of these actually, so that'll be fun. A uh, little pin this year because Pearl Jam is the, uh, it's harder to aim in the reverse direction, Pearl Jam was the ambassadors for record store day this year, and then they gave me some, uh, some flair to, to represent the store there or spin me around, so good good stuff. Good stuff all around. I was also able to get the official poster. Let's see here. Gotta love that dogfish head beer. Oh yeah. <laughs> Alcohol and gummies. This is, this is what it means to be an adult now. <laughs> and without further ado, the records themselves. So I didn't get a lot of 7 inches this year. In fact, I only got one seven inch this year. Um, there were a few I thought about as I looked through the racks, but I ultimately just decided on one because I was trying to uh, budget myself to some degree. I know that's an impossible task, but I tried at least. I tried. Uh, first one up was Bad Religion's new release, My Sanity, here. It's two new songs that have not been on any albums before, and whether or not they will be on a future album is also up in the air. And this one is a standard black. It is absolutely no colors. It is just the music, which means you know that they are serious. With this next one, it wouldn't surprise me if most of you went out just to pick this up specifically on top of some other things, but it is Pink Floyd's A Saucer Full of Secrets. Just to follow up with uh, last year's release of Piper at the Gates of Dawn, they decided to put out a new mono mix for... Uh, for Saucer Full of Secrets as well. Although it's uh, it's obviously not the same kind of uh, special packaging that we got with Piper, which I was a little uh, sad about. Uh, the important thing is the, the album itself, of course, and I've never had this album uh, before. Piper, in, in the case of that one, I at least had an, uh, a stereo master of it in the past. This case with Pink Floyd, I have never actually owned uh, this album in vinyl, period, in any way, shape, or form. So I was really happy to see it, because I said, oh, okay, I was meaning to get that anyway. Let's do it. Here's your nice, nice inner sleeve with your Columbia Records logo right on there. And your very nice, shiny black. Yes. Yes, sir, indeed. That will be another fun one to put on the turntable later. So for this next one here, I'm not really sure how much, if any, hype at all that this thing actually got, but um, I was excited for it, personally. Anyone who's a fan of, uh, I'll say, early psychedelic rock to early fragments of progressive rock, I think would be interested in this one. It is the re-release of Procol Harum's first album. This is a re-release of the U.S. version of it, which was previously just called A Whiter Shade of Pale because that was the, the popular single 
uh, that that they put out the the most popular single. In fact, that they've that they had put out. In fact, if you were to tell me that you've never heard that song before, I would say that you're lying. I would say that I actually do not believe you. <laughs> I think that you have, and you just didn't know it was by them. It's just that iconic. Here, I'll do a close-up here of the text so that you can all see just what actually came with it. Hope that works. There we go. Yeah, as you can see, this one was a little special because it has every single track from pretty much every version of the album that's ever been released, whether in this country or other countries, so UK and, uh, and beyond. And then it has the exclusive 50th anniversary stereo mix of Hamburg, which has, uh, of course, never been on vinyl before, so that one's a first. It's got a poster with uh, I, what I assume is going to be this artwork, but I'm about to find that out. And then we'll see what they mean by Starburst Colored Vinyl Limited Edition. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, I have a feeling this is going to be a really pretty one. Well, starting here, this is the poster. Yes, it is exactly as I hoped. Beautiful, beautiful poster of the original artwork. I love it. I may be tempted to frame it. I love it that much. That's really, really nice. Oh, wow. Wowie zowie. Let's, let's put that close up so you can see. That is gorgeous. This is absolutely gorgeous. Turn it around. Wow. Wow, I'm impressed just by that alone. That is, that is absolutely gorgeous. That's nice. And uh, on the inside here, it looks like there's a nice little write-up about the album. A uh, whole bit of behind the scenes information the making of and uh oh and a little little mention from jimmy page here i can tell you proko harem was a pretty happening album well there you go jimmy page endorsed it boom <laughs> get it and then on top of that here we have the second disc right here wow that is quite a that is quite a look here the, that's that's quite a reproduction. You can even see all of the markings and things as if this was an old copy right here with the with the pink cover, which was one of the international covers of it. I personally like the black and white look better, but uh, I guess I'm just goth like that. <laughs> here is ooh, ooh, that's even prettier. Oh my gosh. Wow. They they really went all out with the splatter vinyl look on this one. This this is this is incredible. I, I'm tripping out just just looking at this. Wow, wowie zowie! Absolutely beautiful. This is this is wonderful. If it sounds even half as wonderful as as it has looked here, then it, it's worth every single penny. That that's truly incredible. And this is uh, a mono copy of it. So, we will see, oh, well, I will see, if it sounds as nice as it did back in 1967 when it first came out. Very excited to hear it. This next one here was a bit of a surprising release for me, just because I didn't expect it to actually come out. Um, last year, you remember, I got um, Frank Zappa's Lumpy Gravy release, which was also a really fascinating one, because I had never heard the original orchestral uh, sound before without the surf rock bits thrown in. This one here uh, was also interesting. So this was the guitar world according to Frank Zappa. What this actually is uh, was a a release of... how do I put this? <laughs> this was a release with a magazine that was only available on cassette previously. There was no other way to hear it than on this cassette that came with this Guitar World magazine. This is, ooh, it is actually numbered. I'm, I'm gonna display that on the back here so you can see the shiny one, yeah. That is a zero, 0544, ooh, 544. I wonder how many copies there were here. Let, let, me, let me check that really quick, that's exciting. So that's impressive. There were only there were four thousand of these. So to have a number less than one thousand in that that's pretty cool. That, that's actually really exciting. Let's take a look at the inside. This appears to be a gatefold. So we open that up, 
and it's got a nice big picture of the man himself and little bits of info from each song that he's doing uh, guitar solos in here uh, which is what this is basically is a whole album of specifically of guitar solos the reason why this is so interesting to people and why it's so desired by people is the fact that um, some of the arrangements of those solos are actually very different from the studio releases. A few of them arguably better, too. Um, you can, I believe this is uh, uh, up there on, it's been uploaded on YouTube before, so if you were curious, you could take a listen that way. I'm gonna pull the disc out now so we can see how that looks. Ooh, it is a nice whitish, but mainly clear vinyl. You could, yeah, you put it in front of me, you can see pretty transparent very neat looking uh, yeah kinda like a film reel which I, I guess is the look that they were going for with this yeah as stated again um, this is one of those ones I was just I was not expecting to see it I didn't think we'd ever get something especially something that was on a cassette previously as they did as they showcase on the back here onto a vinyl like this and I'm very curious to hear how it will sound considering that that's the only way that we had this before we'll, we'll see what the Zappa Family Trust could give us in this case. These last two things, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a nerd. And these things, they're nerdy. Be prepared. <laughs> the first is one of two of the Doctor Who audio series. There were two releases this year, just as there were two last year, and I believe two the year before that as well. What makes this one special to me, this Galaxy 4 release, is that this is one of the previously lost episodes. Um, for those who aren't part of the Doctor Who fandom or have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about here, um, a lot of the episodes from the first two Doctors, from William Hartnell and uh, Patrick Troughton, I, I hope I pronounced that right, um, they, the video for them was not recovered. Most of them pretty much died out or disappeared and it was a real shame. They, you, you, you would have fragments of some episodes in places. BBC tried to come up with ways to still release these stories for us. One was through audio dramas like this. The other was to reanimate some of them with, uh, with actual hand-drawn animated scenes to replace them. Um, mixed results all around. Some people prefer one format, some prefer the other. I personally really love the audio drama format because you have great narrations from people, including the ones who played the Doctors or other characters, to really paint the scenes for you. And they were always very well done. I always found myself very enthralled with them. And this particular story I've never actually heard before, so I'm very excited to hear it. I'll display the sticker right there. Classic 1965 story, complete on vinyl for the first time. Two 180 gram heavyweight splatter vinyl. Ooh, can't wait to look at that. Lost TV adventure, as I was saying. Exclusive to Record Store Day. Aren't they all? That's nice. Something I didn't realize is this is actually a glossy uh, heading for the title there for Doctor Who. You can sort of see it as I run it under the light here, but it's actually got a very shiny finish. That's a nice look to it. The inside of the gatefold. Not too detailed, but very simplistic. Nice look for it, I think. And let's take a look at the two discs here. Ooh, very nice, very nice sleeves. Very nice artwork on the sleeves, I think. Ooh, yeah, this is, this is something. Wow, are we sure this isn't a psychedelic rock album I'm looking at here? <laughs> That's really nice. Very, very pretty. I was wondering why this was more expensive than the ones last year. Now I'm starting to see <laughs> see why. All right, and here's the second disc. Similar similar look to the first. Let's see. Yep, that one also has the same kind of finish. Very very interesting. From far away, it almost looks like uh, oh, like the inside of a fruit or something. And following in the same vein, we also have Destiny of the Daleks. Now, unlike the other one, which was for William Hartnell, the first Doctor, this is one of the many that was created for Tom Baker, the fourth Doctor. Uh, he's one of, if not the most popular Doctor in 
the series. He he pretty much always has been. Most old school fans will tell you that he was their doctor because a lot of people grew up with him uh, during the 70s, and he's he's iconic now. I mean, whether he's your personal favorite or not, it's it's hard to you know dismiss the influence that he had on every other actor that came after him. Okay, so we will take a look at that as well. This is a similar inside to the other one. And we'll see how the splatter vinyl looks on these. Once again, similar artwork. All very nice. Ooh. I think I might like this one a little more, just because I like red. I really do like red. That is... Wow. That is explosive. That is absolutely explosive. This is... This is gorgeous, this thing. Wow. I, I'm sorry, I'm just staring at it. It's it's up close. It's it's something else. And then pulling out the second one with, again, with similar artwork. Ooh. That one even looks slightly different compared to the other one. I, I'm not sure if it's because there's a little more blue in it up there. If you see up close, there's a little more blue than black. But it, again, just wow. That's that's really something. Just the way they make it explode on the screen like that for you is really, really telling. And there were a few more that I would have liked to get, but either found that the price was just going to be a little too much for me to bear, or I just simply couldn't find it. I did see a live concert uh, set for the band Gong from 1973. I was very tempted to jump on that because I, I am a fan of the band, and that was a concert during one of their greatest periods. Uh, they're a, a progressive rock group, early psychedelic rock, progressive rock group again, that, um, that had put out this trilogy of albums called The Flying Teapot. It, it was very, very trippy stuff. Um, and I, yeah, I, I absolutely loved it. And this, this was a live concert from during that that high point. That was one of my personal favorites for them as a group. Um, but it, it was just a little bit too much for me to, to be willing to jump in on that. Uh, I saw there was an unreleased single from Iggy Pop, but then I heard the song itself, and it didn't really impress me as much, so I didn't jump on that one. Uh, there was a beautiful set of Aretha Franklin singles from 1967, but unfortunately that was also just a little past the price range I was willing to go for it. Um, but all of these things look, look very, very nice, and there's a lot of other great releases this year, too. Again, the, this was this was me having to budget. If I did not have to do that, I would probably had a much bigger selection, but uh, I'm still very happy with what I got. And that's going to do it for me this year uh so tell me about what you got because you know we're we're all big one big happy record store day family here together so tell me what you got in the comments below i want to hear it i want to see it show me the goods